Once again, somebody knowing I'm into old school video games gets me a piece of at games hardware as a gift. This time around, it's the handheld. You may remember last year, I took a look at the Genesis console. This time, I have the Genesis handheld to show you. Just so you know, there is a 3.5mm to composite video out on one of these. However, in the case of mine right here, it does not work. I've tried numerous tricks, numerous cables, no such luck. So you will see a little bit of camera aimed at the console, just so there's a little bit of gameplay footage. I hate doing that, but what else could I do? The version of the portable for 2016 comes in a box prominently displaying Sonic the Hedgehog and also featuring the three Mortal Kombat titles on the box. Once again, like the console from the previous year, they show screenshots of the arcade versions of the Mortal Kombat games. It also claims to have more Sonic and RPG games in the pack. Turning over to the back, there's a somewhat different lineup of games, the console version that I took a look at last time. Absent are the Streets of Rage games. This one had Sword of Vermilion and Fantasy Stars 2 and 3. So they were being honest about having more RPG games this time. But mainly because the previous one had none. Also omitted in this one is the Genesis version of Virtual Fighter 2. An omission, but not as big of a loss as the Streets of Rage games. Another thing that stands out to me is that this time around there are only 39 Genesis titles and 41 homebrew titles. Yes, the BS games outnumber the actual Genesis games this time around. And speaking of those homebrew games, they're the usual collection of Drek, mix of knockoffs and various filler. Definitely not anything you buy the console for. A couple of them may be fun in small doses, but they're nothing really exciting. I'm sure I already know what you're thinking. What about that sound? What about the audio? Is it still a mess? Well, uh, let me play a little Sonic the Hedgehog for you right here to uh, show you. I feel like it's even more obvious here, especially listening to the handheld through headphones. It's as if the music is being played back at a lower speed and it's affecting the pitch. I have no idea why that may be except for the obvious inferior hardware. The handheld itself is rather small, almost as if it was meant for a child's hands. The buttons are cramped and they're at kind of an awkward angle. But the screen is decent with a nice crisp image. At certain angles it looks a little washed out. But the screen is a fairly cheap LCD, and that's to be expected. I find it a little odd that there's no wall wart AC adapter, just a mini USB cable. Meaning if you have an Android phone or a device like that, you can probably just use the AC adapter for that. Otherwise, you're plugging it into your computer. The most interesting feature would have to be the SD card slot. ROMs can be loaded onto the console by way of the SD card. However, not every game is compatible with the handheld. I've not seen a full list of compatible ROMs. Also, on the packaging, there is a website listed directing you where to download more games. Musically, that site does not seem to exist. I do have a fairly extensive collection of ROMs, and most of the games that I tried do seem to work just fine, but I really didn't try anything out of the ordinary. All in all, I do like this a little bit better than the console version, mainly because it is portable. However, the buttons are cramped and the sound is still atrocious on these things. If you want to spend a bit more money, you can hack a PSP and get Genesis games on that. Or if you want to spend a lot more money, find yourself a Nomad. All considered though, this is something I think it's neat, but I can't give it a recommendation. Hope you've enjoyed the review. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care.